Welcome back to the Nut Boys. We're today, today we're doing nuts. Is that what you found? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's what I found. <laughs> Before we Was started, the other one different. No, it was the same one. Oh, that's the same one you've had for like a year. Yeah, that's what two. I was using. Uh, the only difference is the little fucking cardboard around it is gone. But that's no, no fault. Before we started, um, Costello said he found something and he wanted to wait to show me. <laughs> At least you fucked it up, and it sounded really pathetic. Fuck! <laughs> I can do it again. No, you already missed your moment. Yeah, it's it's gone. It's gone. You have to wait until we say something that's very offensive or depressing, and then you can do it again. <laughs> have you, God, that's one of my favorite videos. I don't like this like reference shit all the time on this, but like it, it's it's this comedian. He hands this like confetti popper to a guy in the audience, and he's just like, "Yeah, set this off whenever you think oh, is uh, best." Oh, Burnham, right? Or is that someone else? Uh, no, I don't know who it was. Oh, I, I know who you're talking about. Though. But he was, uh, he started to talk about it. Like it cut to later in the in like the show, and he um, he brought up his mom, and he was like, you know, like my mom passed away, and then the guy shot off the confetti. They was like that. Oh, I love it. Uh, all right, so this might not be the longest version of the nut box. We don't have a whole lot to talk about, and we were more than a little late, uh, Murray. Um, yeah, we. Yeah. We. Yeah, we. Yeah, well. Just so you guys know, I'm going to call it real quick. She has no sense of urgency whatsoever, and it pisses me off all the time. <laughs> no, I. All right. Yeah, tell me why you're late. came on. <laughs> You're coming Careless out. Careless whisper came on on the fucking speaker while I was in the shower. So you were late <laughs> because you wanted to listen to Careless Whisper yeah. in the shower. <laughs> and that's my fault yes. because I put Careless Whisper <laughs> in our Spotify yes. playlist. Yeah. That's why you yes. were late. Yes. Okay. Who else's fault would it be? It's obviously <laughs> your fault. Like, Right. What was I thinking? Yeah. Okay. Right? It's, it's... Putting good music in our playlist doesn't make any sense. Yeah. What the fuck was I thinking? No. What the fuck? Like, you only put music in our playlist. Costello, I know me and you were chilling out and chat waiting for her for about 35 minutes, but it might as well have been me and her hanging out, because it was your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was your fault. <laughs> Absolutely my fault. Uh, I, right. even, I got the fucking porn thing out for, and everything, and, and now apparently it's my fault. So, to summarize what we're going to be talking about today, we have... Uh, what I said in the last episode that we were scraping the bottom of the barrel as a joke. That actually happened this week. There was almost no news. So we have a couple of funny yeah. things to talk about and one or two actual news things that occurred. You know it's a bad week when I find most of the podcast topics. That actually is true. A lot of the times, it used to be, like when the Nutbox first started, I, I found a lot of the topics. And then uh, you introduced, introduced us to Mike and Mike just started like sending us like 90 topics a week. And I was like, we don't have time to cover all of this shit. <laughs> Pick and choose between them at that point. Yeah, that's basically what we did. This is like the most interesting ones. We need Mike so to come back. Which brings us back to our next thing. Uh, we're hiring people to find us articles. <laughs> we just need Mike. That's all we need. We, we need Mike back. Oh, he's got Discord now, so he could probably help out again. Mike, you are very much not welcome on the show. However, <laughs> <laughs> you can fuck off, but do find us, uh, yeah. you know, topics. Yeah, find us stuff. We'll give you a shout out. Uh, we won't even see your whole username. We'll just call you Mike so they can just Google guess. that and find you. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, it's not even his actual name. Ugh. I always forget what his actual name is, but you just reminded me before we started. Uh, wonderful. But I guess we'll go ahead and start with our first one here. Um, so I had I haven't told Costello Marie one of the reasons I want to cover this. Um, no, yeah. But they have announced the new controllers for the PS5 VR. Uh, they look weird. They're very dome shaped. And it looks like what they're trying to do with it is it kind of like covers your whole hand, but they make straps for most VR headsets that actually go around your hand to hold it against your hand. So I don't know what they were trying to do with that. But my favorite part is that it just looks like a uh, a thong. <laughs> you, just kinda... uh -oh. you know, what? I didn't think of that. Yeah, I didn't think about that either. But every description I've seen is like, you know, do what? small thong, dude. Yeah. It's very, very tight one. 
But like, no, I don't like the way you said that. Every description I've seen is just them saying like, "Oh yeah, it's uh, they're they're going very ball shaped on this one or whatever else." I'm like, "No, it's a pair of underwear." <laughs> um, it's a fucking dog. So nice. Long story short, it's just an upgraded version of the ones that we had they're before. Not, I did. They upgrade them to look like that at least. You said you liked that they updated them, or why? So why did they update them? And then if they up, we're going to update them. Why do they look like that? Well, they look like that because Sony doesn't have very good people working on the visuals. But I don't know. Have you seen the PS5? It looks pretty fucking yeah. stupid. Yeah, I have one. There's a router right there. Oh, uh, wonderful. That joke is so fucking overplayed. Def- definitely, definitely a unique joke. Um, but basically, they, they've, they've added a few things to it. It actually has haptic feedback now. I don't think the first ones did. Do we really need that on everything? Yes. Okay. Um, it has finger touch detection, which is the coolest part of it. If it works the way that the index does, it can tell when your fingers are on the side or if they're lifted, so you can do individual finger control. Um, oh, that actually sounds really cool. I don't know if that's actually what they're doing. It's just the way that they word it makes it sound like it's what they're doing. Well, I'm sure that's you know their job to word it in ways to make it sound interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, actually, it says right here. The first thing you'll notice about our next-gen VR controllers is the unique design, which th- which takes on an orb shape. Like, and or shape, that's not huh? a selling feature uh, that allows you to hold the controller naturally while while playing with a high degree of freedom. There are no constraints with how you're moving your hands, providing developers with the ability to create unique gameplay experiences. It's it's the same as every other fucking remote. You hold it in your hand. Like, <laughs> they basically just added uh, a they added a hilt guard. They added a hilt guard. And a cross guard for your when you're sword fighting. Yep, that's it. <laughs> cool cross guard. I, I gotta Can't say, to... it it might feel okay to hold, like with it being shaped like that. It's probably fine. I'm I'm just saying, like that them trying to sell it there is just so badly done. I mean, what the fuck else do they do? It's just a new controller. Yeah, but it's supposed to be like a major upgrade to the last one, and I'm sure it is. I'm not shitting on that, and it's shitting on their terrible marketing here. Uh. uh it, if if you're new to the nut box, uh, we shit on things. That's, Shouldn't be. That's what we do here. <laughs> if you're new here, why? Yeah. Why aren't you here uh, last year when we also did the nut box and then stopped? Also, why are you Went watching? Out. There's better things to be doing right now. <laughs> you could be watching Marie Freeze again. That, yeah. I feel like your camera is worse than it was before. It's 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 pretty consistent this time. Well, like, Last time, bad, that is. It, 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 it like would freeze and then go again every so often. But then, like the second half of the podcast, like it was, it was just fine. But uh, we uh, we have a a JPEG of Ellie down there. Yes, uh, we'll <laughs> just put a JPEG, like a shitty drawing, over her camera space and just leave that there. Yeah. I'll just. How about I just duplicate your camera and put it in person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Marie, do you consent? Cool, cool, cool. My shit froze up. I was wondering why she wasn't talking. Uh, They're all fucking. Yeah, yeah. She, um, she just posted in chat. My shit froze up. Oh my we may god. Need, um, we may need a minute. Uh, so progress on her computer. By the way, uh, we're I, about fifteen dollars in. Yeah, no, when the stimulus thing hits, I guess they're going to be buying her uh, her computer. Yeah, just need uh, Uncle Joe to bring us that fucking money. Yeah, Uncle Joe, I hate that. Never say that again. <laughs> Uncle Joe, what the fuck? Oh, he gives it five sniffs. Ten out of ten connection. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, we still got the JPEG there, even if she's not actually here anymore. <laughs> I like how Discord just leaving her video feed there, though. She's our most professional. Oh, hell yeah, man. All right. So I guess we can go ahead and talk about the... Whoop, that was the wrong button. Uh, talk about that. Oh, oh, now she's gone. Oh, God, our cameras are all messed up. Oh, no. <gasps> oh, God. All right. Well, our audio listeners will enjoy this podcast much more than the video uh, listeners yeah. or watchers. What or else is new? I need to get a. I need to get like this desktop view set up to where it shows uh, just the desktop in case stuff like that happens. Are we just not gonna fix it. 
Uh, I would take way too long. We have to get her back in here. Okay. Uh, so hi, <laughs> I'm down here now. <laughs> what a professional podcast! You can see my chest and my head. Uh, all right. All right. So, let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about this article with our like this me stretching all the way up. Hi, <laughs> dude. I'm going to stretch too. Oh, I saw the Bobby thing. Search for. Um, so, Costello found an article. I did find an article. A, a very, a very good article. Well written article. I so, won't lie. I would like to pre-establish that neither of us care for Activision and the shitty things that they tend to do. Neither of us are this heated about it, though. Yeah, uh, the man who wrote this is the opposite of uh, an unbiased news source. This <laughs> he seems, whole he article, seems pretty unbiased. like the first sentence of this article. Activ- Activision Blizzard is a uh, as a company as good as a definition of e- uh, Activision Blizzard you is as a company as good of a definition of evil as possible. <laughs> like this whole yeah. thing, they're 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 shitting on Activision Blizzard. So the main reason is that they laid off some people. Um, they've done that a few times before. I also love this this photoshopped image of. Uh, Mr. Bobby. I'm pretty sure he did that to to like that's something he created. He didn't have his editors or whatever make that for him. I'm pretty sure he went into Photoshop, did that himself, and was like, yeah, that's yeah. good. No, that's an actual fi- picture of Bobby. Have you never seen him before? <laughs> yeah. No, I haven't. Sorry, I don't keep up with the Activision also, side of things. Also, Marie, if you're able to hop back in, let me know. Um, here, maybe I can try to fix things. Maybe. Here, I'll let you take over while I try to fix things. Oh, you want me to take over? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, shit. I wasn't ready for this. Uh, so yeah, uh, Mans is angry. Uh, he also goes on to say that um, a few other terms, as far as Activision goes, could be thrown in there, like tone deaf and Devil's Muse. You could also call them alleged tax avoiding thieves, grifters, and predators who lure children into gambling. So clearly. He and Activision have a really good uh, relationship. Uh, I can't tell if he used to work there or if he it, just has his son devoted to Activision stuff it, it, and lost a thousand dollars. It really does sound like he just has like some major hatred for Activision. I don't know if it's misplaced or not. It feels like there's something deeper going on here than just a hatred for Activision because he's like he's livid, man. He's not just like disgruntled; he's pissed. Yeah. There. He uh wants to make it clear, not in the beginning, though. Wants to make it clear that uh, they laid off over 800 people after posting a record year in 2019, uh, and he gave all of those people, or sorry, the the CEO gave all those people uh, what was two hundred dollar gift cards. Okay, so that's the part I have an issue, another issue within this article. And this, yeah. this is a reason why, uh, when it comes to doing news articles, you can't be biased when you're writing these kind of things. He mentions a few times in this. Uh, and to bring, be fair, do what? he does say, the article does say that it is opinionated. Oh, does it? Yeah. Uh, where? <laughs> This piece has opinions. It has some news, too. Mostly opinions about Activision Blizzard being evil. Okay. It is um, very opinionated. They at least give you a warning. But that doesn't, ex- that doesn't discredit the fact that he goes on to explain multiple times that he gave all those people $200 gift cards, but does not mention... He does three once. Months. He does once. He mentions it once, to be fair. He mentions it once. Okay, so what, never mind. Basically, if you, if you work for Activision and you get laid off, like that should be your end goal. Because it means that you get two hundred dollars to spend on uh, Blizzard to buy your Overwatch loot boxes, <laughs> which is all you need. Let's be honest here. Uh, that actually is a thing. They they give them two hundred dollar gift cards uh, when they're uh, terminated. I have a, I'm getting a call from Ellie. Mind if I take this? Go for it, man. Let's put it on speaker. You're on speaker, by the hey. way. Don't say anything stupid. My computer will turn on. I can tell. Um, yeah. So are you just out? No, I'm still trying to get in. Okay, okay, that's cool. Um, what can we expect from you? What? <laughs> what can we expect from you as a company? <laughs> um, uh, 
your service here has been wonderful and uh, as irreplaceable as you are, I'm sorry, but I have to let you go. I cannot hear you. Okay, that's fair. Uh, Ellie, what do you, uh, why couldn't you just text me this? She wants to be on the podcast, man. Because I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we'll have to go without her. Can I hang up? <laughs> no. What the fuck? I'm, d- I'm in the middle of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, uh. Maybe That's she, our most professional member, by the way. Yeah, maybe she will rejoin us next week. <laughs> All right. Anyways, yeah. uh, so when you get laid off, you, you get a $200 gift card. whoop de doo But uh, here's the thing. He, he describes that as that being an evil, terrible thing. That's not all that you get. I don't find the $200 gift card thing bad or evil. It's, like, weird, but it's not bad. Like, because you also get three-month severance that. pay. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like a bonus to your service package. Like it's not a bad, it's not a bad thing at all. And I gotta say, part of this, I'm on Activision side for part of this. So he's talking about how they do live events, right? And of course, right now, live events are kind of screwed uh, due to a uh, certain virus that is going around. So a lot of people that they laid off are pertaining to those live events, people that would host them or just participate in them. Um, so it makes sense to lay them off. Now, they're not being fired. They're being laid off. It means that they could be called back again. My girlfriend was recently laid off from her job um, due, once again, to the verse, and they just called her back again. Um, the verse. So you would get three months severance when you're laid off, and then you could sign up for unemployment during that time, which is paying probably more than you were making there to begin with, because unemployment is, like, super boosted right now. Um... And then more more than likely, at least the hope is that they would be calling you back when they can do live events again. So it's not optimal, but from a company's point of view, I, I get that you know taking care of your employees is a big thing. But if they are concerned about saving money, why would you want to pay all of these people who aren't doing anything for six months? Aren't they on the lower end of it anyway? I mean, I assume so. But like, like no, like I think he mentioned something about them being on the lower pay scale. Like lower end of the pay scale. It's very possible, but at the same time, though, like you know, if where did this guy estimate estimate for this layoff? Uh, he says like fifty, uh, like fifty to a hundred, somewhere between fifty and one hundred eighty nine were laid off. Like, yeah. you know, it, it's not it, it's saving the money in the end. These employees weren't doing anything anyways due to the live event thing. Like again, not defending Activision normally, but in this case, like I I can see it. But I also have to agree when he said that. Uh, how much is Mr. Bobby making again? Uh, I think it was 200, 200 million? Yeah, $200 million cash bonus. And this guy made a very good point in the article. Um, if they were to take 0.5% of that $200 million away from him, which is $1 million. So $1 million out of $200 million away, that, um, if, you, if, you, if you're paying your workers an average of uh, 50 k a year, that would still be 20 people that keep on employment for half of a percent of his bonus. So I, I, this, that's, an old, that's old news that he's getting paid way too much for his job. I mean, who isn't as, as the CEO goes? <laughs> um, You're not a CEO, bud. Yeah, fair enough. I just fix things. Well, technically, you're the CEO of the Nutbox. Yeah, I'm the Nut CEO. What does that make you? Are you are you the VP? Yeah, I'd be the VP. Yeah. No, you're you're gonna be the head of marketing. I'm the head of marketing. Yeah, we're gonna make Mike. Why is it Ellie the head of marketing? We're gonna make Mike HR. Okay, it's probably not a good and idea, but okay. I think most fittingly, we can make Ellie uh, technical support. Technical support. She has the, <laughs> that's, she, yeah. she has oh, the most experience. <laughs> she does have the most experience. Oh man, she just posted in a chat. She might not get her stimulus. That. uh... That throws things, uh, you know, well, out of whack there. Well, let's flip that around. I might get a raise. Hell yeah. That's cool. So there's that, you know, there's always <laughs> bonuses everywhere, you know, silver yeah. linings and whatnot. So you can use the bonus money from your raise to pay for her computer. <laughs> that slow head <laughs> nod. Very subtle head nod. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try. Cool. So- 
since she won't be here for this, I'm going to go ahead and try to fix the other cameras as well. Um, so if you're watching on video, I am so sorry. If you're watching on audio, I'm also sorry, because it's probably annoying hearing us talk about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Costello, uh, fill the air with something. Uh, well. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I suppose that's fair. <laughs> I, I I did just tell you to do something. I didn't really tell you what. It was air that I filled. Therefore, air has been filled. Once I figure out my issue with uh, okay, with so uh, what you keep you keep talking about what you're doing. I'm just gonna bitch about there's no light. Yeah. Okay. We'll just talk at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> uh, you all <laughs> you you uh, as you know, I am an avid fan of the Soul Board series. Um, I am also an avid hater of anyone that uses the Soul Born series to uh, equate it to any sort of game coming out that has any vague similarities to a dodge roll. It's not even that. No, 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 no. It's not even that. Half the time, the, the, what they're equating to Dark Souls is game hard. Game make me yeah. angry. This one specifically, though, is Bloodborne. If you don't know what There Is No Light is, it's, uh, it's an indie game. Uh, it's like one of the brutal action indie game with fucking top-down hack and slash. Bullshit. It looks like Hades, but pixel art. I'm going to be honest. It's a demo, is all it is. And it is you know, obviously just more than that. It's different than that. But it doesn't even... They say it looks like Bloodborne, and they talk about that in the article uh, because it's a horror world filled with monsters, and that's that's Bloodborne, I guess. And I can see where they're getting at, at the, uh, like, kind of. But it doesn't look very Victorian, like Bloodborne is. Or gothic, at least. Also, it's fucking top down. And uh, I, I it, no, nothing about this game screams Bloodborne. I, I, like, I don't understand the need for fucking journalists. Which, by the way, you barely call yourself journalists if you do shit like this. It even in I the mean, fucking article says something about Metroidvania, uh, the Metroidvania uh, fucking blasphemous. Like. How is it like Bloodborne if you're also going to say it's like Blasphemous? Why can't you just pick one, man? Oh. It could be like two games, sure. But Bloodborne and Blasphemous are very different games. One of them's a fucking 2D side-scroller. Well, I don't fucking get it. To be fair, though, Blasphemous is the Dark Souls, a 2D side-scroller. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> up. I've actually played it. It's actually a challenging game. Um, yeah, I played... Oh, shit. Uh, I played... Um, sorry, I had my knife out. Uh... Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, that one game where you die and you don't have a head and shit like that. Fuck. I really wish I could remember what it is. It's it's a uh, it's a roguelike. Oh, it's the Dark Souls of roguelike. <laughs> the Dark Souls of roguelike. Um, uh, so really good game that I played. I wish I could remember what it's called. I, I would like to clarify, at least on my end. I don't know about him. We're not shitting on the game. I'm sure the game is great. No, no, I have no it's, problems with the game. I have the problems with fucking editors yeah. or articles. CBR.com. Comic book yeah. something? Isn't that what it stands for? Uh, no idea. I don't remember. Uh, but, like, every... like it is, It's not creative to say this game is like Dark Souls or Bloodborne. Like, it, it is, like... First off, they're not, those aren't my kind of games. I don't usually like to do games that are supposed to be super hard because I have anger issues with games like that. But, uh... I, I, to say the game is hard, they said that Cuphead was like Dark Souls when it released. They did, didn't they? Just say that the game is hard. Oh, you don't understand. It's artistic. You just equate it to other things. It's a metaphor. Like, comparing games like The Surge to Dark Souls, that makes sense. Because it is a Soulsborne style Surge, game. Yeah. No, The Surge felt a lot like Dark Souls, but, like, there's more to it than that, and I liked it. And then, like, uh,. Uh, Jedi Fallen Order, again, was very inspired by Dark Souls. Like, obviously it's Star Wars themed, but you can compare those as well, because they are very similar games. But calling Absolutely. any game that has the screen brightness turned down a little bit and the difficulty slider turned up a bit by default, that doesn't make it Dark Souls. <laughs> I couldn't rant more about this. Uh, 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 or I could, I, there's, I could rant about it for hours, how much I fucking hate when people do that shit. And again, like the I game, get... the game could be good. I only heard about it like a few minutes ago. It could be fine. We're not judging the game at all. Like I'm sure the game is great. It, I like a lot of the like pixel art style games and like it. Uh, Hyper Light Drifter. We've ever played that. 
It's a really good indie game <laughs> with this kind of perspective on like the camera. Like I, I don't know what you'd exactly call that kind of view, but I like games like that. But comparing it to Dark Souls, this kind of waters down the game. It's like when, uh, oh God, uh, Game Theory, he did a video on another game that had uh, some graphical things similar to Undertale. And he clickbaited the video calling it Undertale 2. And when you scroll down in the description of that video, there's no links to the game itself, but he does link to his other Undertale videos and stuff like that. Um, and like nowhere in the description or the title or anywhere did he mention the name of the actual game. And it muddies down that game by saying, oh, it's just like another version of this. Like, it, you're kind of hurting the indie developer by saying, oh, this is like a bootleg version of this. Like, If, if you've played enough Undertale, here's a bootleg version. Have fun. Uh, it's such a idea like this this uh, silly indie game is a lot like this AAA Studios game. Yeah, like go ahead and dead. But then people like, you know, you're people who like go and just play a bunch of AAA games and don't usually do a whole lot of indie are going to go into this with super high expectations and then end up not liking the game as a result. It's going to be completely different whenever they actually look at it because this looks nothing like Bloodborne and I cannot say that enough. This looks nothing like Bloodborne. There's monsters in it. Yes. There's a hack and slash element. Yes. This looks nothing like Bloodborne. I mean, I don't know. Those graphics definitely look pixely enough to look like Bloodborne. <laughs> Fuck you. I mean, it was on the PS4. Anyway. Fuck you. Uh, just saying, PS4 might, have, PS4 might have been a better console than the Xbox One. Uh, well, but the Xbox One did have better hardware. All right. Um... That is like what sucks on Microsoft is like they make better hardware. And I, li I like their controllers more. I like everything more. But God, their exclusives just don't exist. They give me no reason to buy the console. It's gonna change soon. Yeah. Well, then again, they they still give me no reason to have a PC. It's true. Uh, oh, they did. Uh, wait a minute. I didn't even think about that. They did convince me to buy Skyrim again because I bought Skyrim VR. <laughs> I saw you were playing that earlier. I was gonna say something. I wasn't I was playing like, it. I, uh, I was trying to get some mod stuff set up. Um. You didn't play, you just bought it. Yeah, I can't play it. My, I, uh, I did buy, for those of you who you know, are new here, I just bought a VR headset, but it will be here in a few days. Um, so I was getting things ready for Skyrim because I want to stream it. Um, Expect three videos next week. No, uh, I'd probably take forever to edit. Because like, whenever I edit a stream, I usually have to like the whole stream at once and then cut it into episodes and like it takes forever. Um. But I actually might have a new video editor soon. That'll be announced if it happens. So I might actually have somebody editing things for the gaming channel. Uh, hey, the best part is that off. it's the best part is that it's free. <laughs> but, oh, even better. Uh, we'll see. I, I, we're we're kind of testing the waters right now, so that channel will have a bit of a delay. Um, I'm still doing Junk Seeker. I like editing those. I'm going to keep editing those. I just don't have time to do both. Uh, I spend all of my time editing. But, uh, I know you're up at like 12 in the morning and I see you get on Movavi. I'm like, oh, yep. there it goes again. Uh, I think last night I was up editing until about three. Should be around that much. Yeah, I want to say. Anyways, uh, so you can't get paid to be my editor, but you can get paid to play Minecraft. Man, look at that segue. Um, it's a really good smooth segue. It's probably the smoothest segue we've ever had. Yeah, to be fair. Uh, still shitty, but yeah. So this article, it was it was actually suggested to me it was as a notification on my phone, and I was just like, "This sounds like a scam site," but I clicked on it anyways. And no, it's an actual thing. Uh, there's this company called Whatshed that I guess they do like gardening and stuff like that, like real life stuff. Um, but I guess they're doing stuff in Minecraft now, and they're they're wanting to recruit. What it says here, recruit a collective of virtual landscape gardeners to provide professional advice to players looking into improving their in-game outdoor space. Excuse me? Yup, and this this is like the job uh, requirements here. You have to evaluate a client's current setup and providing uh, creative feedback. Providing clients with suggested setups that uh, stay within their budget and explain the reasoning behind each of these choices. Creating multiple designs for each client should they want to redesign uh, redesign in the future. Like, this is an actual thing. 
And they have a link here, yeah, right here, where you can actually apply. Can I apply real quick? For the job. Can I fill out this form real quick on podcast? Do what? I, I want to apply. Go for it, man. So I have an yeah, email address, a full name, my country, all that stuff. I wish you could see it, but um, please yeah. outline any relevant experience. Uh, but like... Uh, Ranked number two in Dance Dance Revolution. These are like actual. See, I don't see anything like the Minecraft shit on here aside from that job listing. Like, it looks like they just like sell stuff. Yeah, like sheds. Please, please describe why you think you would make an excellent virtual landscape gardener. Uh, I play Minecraft. <laughs> uh, excellent base building Minecraft extraordinaire. It's like, I play Minecraft two hours a week. <laughs> uh, but, like, this is an actual application, and it, it's advertised up to $60 an hour. I don't know about that. Okay, well now, it's saying, now it's saying 50 pounds. This is UK-based, so... You have relevant equipment for the role. In parentheses, games console and Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh my Terms god. Get, oh wow, this is not a very long uh application. That's literally all the questions. Wow. So are you are you gonna submit it? Are you gonna apply for this job? Uh no. Oh my god, look at the comments. I hope I yeah, hope I that, just saw those. I hope that I will work with you. Oh. Is she back on? I guess she so. Oh my cameras are fucked. I didn't expect god, her damn. to rejoin. I gotta fix them again. God damn it. All right, well, uh, have fun reading comments while I fix comment, uh, the cameras. Welcome back, Marie. I'm gonna read out comments then. Boris said, Hi. Hey, I played Minecraft for seven to eight years so I can help somebody to decorate his or her garden. Carl Fortner said, My knowledge is superior and extraordinary. Playing games, I'm the master. <laughs> He's the master of playing games. We finally found him. Brandon Presop Presopio said, I've been playing Minecraft for 11 years and have tons of knowledge of the game and its mechanics and ever-expanding design. So I believe that my knowledge is far superior than the average candidate. Like Juego Minecraft desta que era muy pequeña y tengo una creatividad bastante <laughs> <What? buen>. buena. <laughs> Very nice. I took Spanish for two years. That's it. Wait, why yeah. are there Spanish comments? This is the UK. It's not like I mean, I guess you know they would have a decent Spanish population, but I don't think it's nearly as big as the population in the US. Don't worry, guys. Ga Gavin Drake's got this. He said, "Quick tip: I wouldn't be so prideful. It looks kind of gross, and it would make a hire hesitant about recruiting you." Just keep that in mind, boys. Yeah, yeah. I, I am really concerned Travis, about being hired. I have been playing Minecraft since before the adventure update. And I am studying to get an architectural degree or an agricultural degree. Those things go hand in hand. Wow. I will happily help any Minecraft player complete their dream Minecraft garden. Can I just say, there are YouTube videos for this stuff. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can think about this entire time. <laughs> There's a lot of Spanish people. I've been playing Minecraft for almost 15 years. If I get this position, it'll be a dream come true. But like, she get a better dream. <laughs> what is like? My question is, you know, when these positions are inevitably filled, because obviously they will be. You know, there's plenty of twelve year olds that would love to get paid to do this. You know, speaking of, Matthew Alvarez said, "I am a fourteen year old who has <laughs> built many cities and has built many machines that can help you Yo. guys with things to eat. You and know, I you know. also, I am very friendly to help. So please hire me." And someone responded with, "Lol, hi." <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know what that reminds me. We gotta, we gotta get Chris to apply. Oh yeah, we definitely have to get Chris to apply. <laughs> we gotta get Chris to apply. Okay. This crazy so, as a world. We have moved locations, but our cameras are fixed. Nice. So like, I have been playing Minecraft almost every day since I was seven. I am ten now. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my thing, though. Like, when they eventually find adults to do this and fill the roles and start paying them way too much money to design gardens in Minecraft, 
how are they making money back on that? Are they gonna like have like have clients that'll pay them to join their Minecraft world and? If, is there a th is there like some kind of laws or something about paying people that are like ten years old? Probably. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is the UK. I don't really know their laws that well, but more than likely, still yeah. yes. Uh, it's. But like, what the hell? It's so dumb, and I love it. I really wanted it to be fake. You have no idea. Like, I vetted this crap. Like, this is from Lifehacker. And, like, I mean, this website seems legitimate, because, like, you can actually buy, like, uh, like, sh like firewood storage sheds and shit like that from them. And they, like, they have, like, a blog thing. Like, we can look at, uh, here, let's look at one of their amazing articles. Uh, Asian Hornet UK Sightings Map. <laughs> oh, Hey, see everywhere that there's a hornet on here? There's at least one hornet in each of those locations. Can I read out one more comment? Go for it. I have played Minecraft since the day it was released on iOS platforms, with only a demo edition. Since that day I joined a Minecraft world, I have never stopped playing. I have gotten to the point where I would watch Minecraft gameplays and read the Minecraft books to learn about building and survival techniques. Oh it got to the God. point where I got Minecraft on my PC, then Xbox, then my PS4, and I still have it on all these platforms, including my phone. No matter how outplayed people say Minecraft is, it really is one of the best, if not the best games I have ever played. He actually did say one of the best, if not the best. Okay, don't get me wrong. I do love Minecraft. I play it way too much. But, like, holy God, that was a speech. <laughs> you bought the books. <laughs> I what? The job. I've seen Ooh. the books in real life. I actually know somebody who owns some of them, but he got them when he was like a young Why child. You oh, okay. Um, but here's my thing. What's the point in the books when the game updates and now the books are completely irrelevant and we get like an update every year? But it's the same Money. thing. It's the same thing with game guides. Games Dude, are updating so much now. Money. The game guides don't make sense though because the internet literally has all the answers a game guide could give. Hold on, uh, Marie, what was the answer to that again? Money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that Honestly, game guides need to die. Like, I get... I, no, you know what? They need to put them back with every time you buy their CD, their disc. You, they need to put a game guide in there again. Honestly. But no, like, actual, like, full-on, like, game guides. I don't get why they still exist. Like, the, you know, the book version. Because, it's the novelty like, of it at this point. But when they're making, like, when they're printing all that off anyways... Do an art book. You can make the book half the size and sell it as an art book. And the only people who are buying your guides anyways are buying it because they are a fan of that game. They're not actually going to use it as a guide half the time. Like I actually still own a RuneScape guidebook. Well, like I have the Elder Scrolls Special Edition guidebook that has all, all the DLCs and stuff in it. I don't look through that. I just like having it. I call it the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> kind of so, uh, you know, that doesn't surprise me. Um... But, like, if it was an art book, that would be so much cooler. Why don't you sell those when a game releases? People would be more likely to buy them when, instead of a book that they have no reason to look at. Aren't some... Haven't some games done that, though? I mean, yeah, I, I, have, a, I have an art book for uh, Dragon Quest. It's actually, like, for the, their, like, 30th anniversary. It has artwork from, like, every game. Um, it's actually kind of cool. But It's getting more common now. Slowly. It just needs there needs to be a law passed. You can no longer print guides for games. A <laughs> law. <laughs> that also means that Ninja can't make his uh he can't sell his book anymore. So, Whew, don't even get me started. Has a book? Yeah, Ninja has a book on uh, how to get uh epic victory royales in Fortnite. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. What? Isn't that what it's called? No, I don't know what it's called, but like it like it actually has. Like, I watched like this dude like who actually bought it like review it. And, like, it actually has, like, whole sections on, like, working out. Because, like, you need to be in shape Ooh. to be a real gamer. Do they do they recommend you playing the OSU aim trainer? Oh, OSU? Yeah. Uh, probably not. Just started playing that, by the way. Really fun game. But yeah, it's actually not bad. It gets a lot of shit. But, uh... Really? Yeah, there's a lot of people who, like, are out of that community that look at it and go, like, that game's fucking stupid. Like, it's, it's fun, man. I actually have a friend who bought a drawing tablet just to play it. 
It's a fucking it's a it's a fucking rhythm game. How do you think it's stupid? There's a hundred of those. Yeah, well it's it's a weeb rhythm game, which again most of it's those not, hundred though, it's just a community makes weeb songs. Every it's not inherently weeb. Every rhythm game ends up with a weeb community making weeb songs for That's it. That's true. And actually I don't yeah. mind. Um, what's... some of the songs are good though. Fuck you. I, I started playing a game Sorry. called Mustache and yeah. got a little addicted oh, to that. it. Yeah, and that's a bunch of weeb crap. But like, I have like nine hours in it. And I only played it for like a week. I like relate Persona Five Dancing. Yes, I played a lot. Oh yeah, I don't even know what that's yeah. about. I just know it's Persona it's Five dancing. and dancing. It's just yeah. it's just a rhythm game. Is it? And it's not really hard either. All right. So, do you guys want to talk about Google being sued? Oh, no, but we're gonna have to, aren't we? This whole lawsuit is basically just a fancy PSA. So. Yeah. Google's being sued for five billion dollars over tracking users' data in incognito mode. I thought this is old news, though. Like we all it, knew this shit was happening. It yeah. is, but it's not. So it, it is old news, but they were trying to get it thrown out of court, and the judge denied right. it. Um. So now it's actually going forward. Uh, how much? How much? Okay. So how much does five billion impact Google? It doesn't. <laughs> okay, just making sure that I was correct in the assumption that they could just take the charge and be done with it. They might have to lay off some of their uh, some of their live event people for a little while, but oh no, <laughs> what will we do? So here, here's the thing: I don't see it actually going through. The now, if Google's actually saving your data, then I could see it happening. But according Doesn't to it- Say that all it does is just not save your history when you do incognito. That's right. The, like it actively tells you that. So here's what it says: okay. You can now pri- yeah. browse privately, and other people who use this, who, other people who use this device, won't see your activity. This device, however, downloads and bookmarks will be saved. Go- uh, Chrome won't save the following: your browsing history, cookies and site data information being entered into forms. But it might still be visible to websites that you visit, your employer or school, or your internet service provider. So, I thought it was pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, and the lawsuit is basically saying that they didn't, that, you know, they're not clear enough on it taking <laughs> data. That's pretty fucking clear to me. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> like, are people thinking <laughs> that when they go and search for like illegal things with Google Incognito mode, that no one's ever Perceive. going to see it? I just want to know what people like are thinking. Like, do you really believe that when you access the internet, do you really believe that what you're doing will not be found in some way, shape, or form? Like, that's how the internet works, is you cannot hide in it. Yep. Unless you're fucking professional. If you are actually concerned, all right, a little, little story uh, explanation thing here. If you're actually concerned about your privacy that much, uh, you're worried that people know that you like playing Osu. Uh, Lord VPN. Well, yeah, our non-sponsor of the day. That's actually kind of true, though. So if you're that concerned, the best thing you can do is set up a virtual machine first off. So it's a, you know, a version of Windows inside of Windows. It's not your actual computer. Set up a virtual machine with a bunch of fake information. Then run that through a VPN. That's about as safe as you're going to get. Yeah. Incognito mode isn't going to do shit. <laughs> the only thing like incognito mode is used for is uh, one, everybody already knows. <laughs> 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 But the other one is actually right. we used to have to use it at work. Um, whenever me and the uh, me and another technician were working at, on the same day, um, we would have one of us would be on our, logged into our email on incognito mode, and the other one's logged in without it. That way, we could both have our emails open because we only had one computer to use. Like there are benefits to using it, but it's not going to hide the trail of the terrible Osu songs that you download. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, uh, other than the obvious, what is it usually used for? Because I it, it, sometimes I use it for like when I don't know a word and I'm embarrassed to look it up and leave it on my okay. search history. Um, Costello, I'm in the exact same boat. I do the same thing. Okay, I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> but like, other than that, what the fuck else is it used for? Uh, you know what's really sad is that I've worked, I've looked up the same word multiple times in a week. Um, no, me too. It's just you know, like, am I using this right? At, yeah, okay, good. At work, we have an arcade machine called the Wizard of Oz. It's just like a, it's like a coin pusher basically. But there's a giant carousel in the center, and it's one of the most important things. If that doesn't work, all six sides are down. And oh. anytime the carousel would have issues, you know, I have to add to my report about that. I don't know how the fuck to spell carousel. And every <laughs> single time, I have to look it up. 
every single <laughs> time because uh, we don't use Gmail anymore. Our company switched over to Outlook. Um, it, it doesn't, uh, the autocorrect like thinks it's just like car. Like it never <laughs> finds the actual word. <laughs> nice. Are you just really bad at spelling carousel? I'm bad at spelling everything. Um, okay. I'll put it this way. I was like a AB student throughout most of my schooling life. Ever- but when I was a little kid, and you know, like when you're really little, you have like spelling classes. Yeah, I was actually really good at those. I think I failed every one of them. Oh, oh damn. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of my strong English and shit like that were usually my strong suits. Yeah. I Spelling was my absolute worst. Yeah. Spanish was my second worst. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey. At least you're consistent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in my high school, you had to take... Uh, uh, foreign language twice, and so I did Spanish yep. one and Spanish two. Got a D both times. Hell yeah, man! That's sure. I'm sure that's passing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it works. Technically, I uh, I learned Spanish. <laughs> Technically, you did. I I took two years as well, and I couldn't be fucked. According to the school system, I know Spanish now, so I'm pretty. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty <laughs> much cheap. bilingual. Really <laughs> Officially I bilingual. Put that in your rest. Yeah, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put in my resume. Took Spanish one and two in 2013 and 14. I'm sure. I, you know, knowing you, you probably fucking speak Dova. Uh, actually, no. I'm. I. I, I could never be that nerdy. Like, I actually, right. I actually do understand part of how the language works, but I don't yeah, know any of it. That's that's pretty fucking nerdy, dude. Not really. Yeah, yeah it's pretty nerdy. <laughs> Don't oh. try to defend that you're not nerdy. You're nerdy as shit. I've dude, seen your fucking living room. Dude, Skyrim is the shit. Dude, don't bring up my living room. <laughs> also, I would never be a nerd with a uh, uh, Daedric helmet and an Ordinator helmet and a uh, uh, Iron <clears throat> helmet and uh, uh, fuck Elder Scroll all on top of my computer. Okay. Are you, yeah, are you trying you're a nerd. to go against us or with us? Do what? Are you trying to go... Against us or with us? Cause I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd for Skyrim. All right. It feels like you're not de- really making a great defense for yourself. I'm a nerd for Skyrim. I'll I'll confess to right. that. Okay. Good. Well, as long as you know, the first step is accepting. But well, the Elder Scrolls as a whole. We're admittance. But yeah, this 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 lawsuit isn't going to go anywhere. I don't expect it to, anyways. But it, it'll serve as a good PSA to people who don't know about incognito mode. It, it doesn't protect you from shit. It basically is just hiding when you're looking up your OSU songs, when you're trying to learn how to spell a word, or when you're doing uh, the the no no thing in the bathroom. Like, yeah, <laughs> it prevents people who might get a hold of your phone or your computer from seeing things that you've done on your computer. But your ISP is still going to see it without a VPN, and Google is most definitely still going to see it. So unless. Unless you're doing something illegal, it doesn't matter. I don't understand why people are so c- concerned about their yeah. privacy. Here's the thing about that, like, for, like, it's like people that are concerned about their privacy. Like, I get you want to be private and shit. Nobody at Google is going to call you up and yeah. ask what the fuck you're looking up. They don't give a shit. They just collect the data and let it sit there, and then, or they like, sell it to the highest bidder. But nobody's gonna fucking care. Unless you're doing something that you can't share, I'm sorry I keep interrupting you, but unless you're doing something that you think that you'll get into legal trouble for, why the fuck are you worried? It, well, a lot of people talk about targeted ads, right? And again, like uh, people in, in the uh, live chat right now or in the, the uh, comment section on YouTube, let me know what your reasoning is if you're worried about that kind of stuff. Because the one I tend to hear is that they're worried about you know targeted ads, right? They're, they're going to see what you're searching and target you with ads. That's cool. If uh, if I'm on YouTube and I get an ad, I'd rather get an ad for like I don't know a new anime that's releasing than a, a, an ad for baby diapers. Yeah, like, honestly, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of like the like personalized ads I get. Like if if I'm curious about something, it's like the third time I've seen a fucking face mask I was looking to buy because we still have to wear those at work. I was trying to get a new one because the one I have is old as shit. I, I get pop ups for those. I get pop ups for all sorts of cool shit that I like, nerd shit that I like. Well, I don't mind it. It's cool. My, my issue with it, right? I searched up because I the new Minecraft layout. I don't understand it because I don't play Minecraft as much as I used to. So I was trying to search up how to make a super flat world, right? And now I get a fucking ad about this website offering to a Minecraft server, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't want this. Leave. 
I searched it up once and I get it every YouTube video. Leave me. <laughs> Targeted ads do make you spend more money. I will admit. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, Kino No 7 there in chat said that it makes him spend more money. I actually rarely spend money on something that I saw in an advertisement. Um, recently for the Junk Seeker channel, I did get an advertisement underneath, like on a YouTube video on mobile, you'll see like ads for like products. Um, and I actually had an eBay recommendation, uh, for something for the junk, for the Junk Seeker channel as a Pokemon thing. I went, the video isn't out yet, so I'm not going to say it, but I bought it from, uh, YouTube. Like I used that ad to go there and buy it because it was actually a good deal. But rarely do I even click on them. It's just that if I'm going to see an ad, I I'd rather see something that I'm actually interested in instead of useless nonsense that either I don't care for or just straight up don't like. Like I don't I don't mind it. I don't get the super stressing over targeted ads or internet privacy a, unless you're doing something free, illegal. I, I think it's a freedom thing. It's like, oh I don't have my freedoms because they're looking at looking at my history. It's like, well what are they taking away from you? Yeah. Like I don't what mind you, it. I feel like most people are against it because they're told that they should be. That's that might be yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of hive mind stuff that goes on. Yeah. It's like No, I'm not saying I'm for it. I'm not for everything that I do being tracked. But, no, for sure, but the the big deal, making a big deal out of it, making it like it's the end of the fucking world. Yeah, that shit is it's it's like relax, man. Nobody's trying to fucking kill you because you search up weird shit on the internet. Yeah. All right. Perhaps. May I am trying to do that. So. So G I Joe P S A is over. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to the next one. Uh, yes, I'll accept your cookies just to get the ad to go away. Um, wow. Targeted ads. No. Actually, what are the ads I'm getting on this page? Is it anything? Uh, cars. I, I assure you, I am not a car person. These ads are not targeted well. <laughs> um, are we about uh, GTA? Yeah, so I figured you might want to cover this one. Yeah, sweet. Um, so for those of you who play GTA 5, GTA Online, you know, all four of you watching, um, you know that whenever you try to play that game, it's going to take 10 fucking minutes for you to even load into a lobby. This is, this is a, for since 2013, or whenever online came out, this has been an issue. And, uh, what is it, 2021, that this has been fixed? Yeah, so... Uh, so, a man, uh, uh, GitHub, GitHub user, uh, ToasterCX, cool name, by the way, uh, found a way to make GTA Online load... 70% faster. Oh my god. Yeah, and it currently does. With one trick. Uh, GTA 5 uses just a single thread of CPU to load the online mode. Uh, eventually making most of the capabilities and latest processors. Is, this is what the article says. I'm just reading it uh, word for word because... I, mean, I can explain I don't know it. a whole lot about coding. If you want to do it, you can. Uh, so, long story short, uh, this was made back in 2013, and a lot of uh, consumer-grade CPUs at the time, you would only have a single thread in your CPU, or at least close to it. And so, you know, you might have, like, dull processors or whatever, but it, it, it was just set to use one thread of your CPU so wait, to actually load the game. Since, since because the shit it was made on is so old, that's the only reason it would take so long? Basically, and they didn't want to throttle your computer a shit ton while loading. So... Cool. Basically, now that computers are better and consoles are better than the 360 when this when GTA up. first released. I get it. You hate consoles. Shut up. No, what I'm saying is the G, like, like the GTA that we're playing now on the PS5 is the same as the GTA that was on the 360. Um, right. That is true. That's fucking weird, isn't it? So long story short, this dude was like, hey, uh, why don't you use more than one thread since most CPUs have a bunch of those now? And Rockstar was like, holy shit, he's a genius. Give him $10,000. Uh, that's That seems like a low <laughs> amount of money, though, for solving such an issue. Well, Like, you would think that somebody would have a talking to, like, you guys are fucking retarded. This is this is the issue this whole time? Or maybe they didn't even give a shit. Well, here's the thing. They don't normally give out rewards for fixing their games. Um, what they do have is they have a, a program that you can join if you're a, if you're a hacker man. Um, and you can get paid for finding security flaws and sending it to them. Uh, but they basically paid him through that program as if he was finding a security flaw, but it, he was just fixing a terrible loading system. Uh, so Costello also gave us a uh, second article that adds it on relates to, this. to the first one. Yeah. It's really so this is actually after the patch was added, and holy god, did it work! 
So the, love it. So the patch is live now, right? That's what it said. Uh-huh. And it's saying that the game would take, let's see here, uh, let's, well, update 1.54. Yeah, uh, GTA Online can now load in less than a minute on PC with newer configurations, which is stellar because I remember when I played GTA 5 Online, it would take like seven, eight minutes to load. And then for some reason you'd get kicked out of the game or you'd have a hacker that would <laughs> kick you out and you'd have to spin another. Load again. Yeah, and it's really yeah. awkward streaming that game, sitting at a loading loading screen, just watching chat go by one message per minute. Like, <laughs> great, great. Well, how long is it? Twenty thirteen to twenty twenty one. That's uh, how long it took. Eight years. A very Nine long time. Years. I wasn't good in math. Uh, <laughs> that's that's just ridiculous. <laughs> So, this is a AAA studio, by the way. Well, they're saying is that even older PCs are still seeing load, um, loading times dropped by um, from about nine to ten minutes to just three. So even an older PC like Murray's might want to load it in three minutes. Yeah, no, won't even load it at all. No, yeah, yeah, no, my computer will um, just explode. But there is, watch. there is kind of a downside apparently um, on the Xbox version. Um, where is it at? I guess it's causing it. To, it's causing the game to crash. Oh, I didn't read that. But it's been pulled from Xbox to back to the, the previous version or the, the update. The, okay. the, the update. It's been pulled. So now, like, if you if you played with this update, the next time you log in, you're gonna have to update again. You're actually downgrading um, <laughs> until they get it fixed. That's funny. Also, it just says Xbox users. It doesn't say if it's Xbox 360 or Xbox One or Xbox, Xbox Series users. X. Xbox users have been removed from the marketplace. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> yeah, we don't want you anymore. Sony's not paying us. We just we're tired of it. We don't. <laughs> uh, it just Rockstar, as big as they are, didn't think about that. What are they? How are they loading Red Dead? Do, the, uh, <laughs> forever, I actually have no idea, but it loads a lot faster than than GTA does. Not on, not on console. Oops. Wrong what do you mean? That loads faster than GTA. No, it does not. It absolutely does. Not for me. It takes fucking forever. Yeah. Well, you smell. You smell. Fuck you. you. Smell. Fuck you. Fuck you. I shout. At least I have a working camera. <laughs> That's what I thought. It's all right. When you don't get your stimulus check, we'll we'll get it fixed. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm just trying to fix my camera so it doesn't show my camera settings. There we go. No more seeing what my ISO is set for. Actually, I don't even show my ISO on that screen. I can make it show my ISO. Uh, hello, okay. it's at 500. Okay. <laughs> uh, but that is everything as far as the articles are concerned. That was fun. All of our big that boys. That was fucking an hour. <laughs> yeah, actually, man, it was longer than I expected. I thought it would be less than an hour this time around. No, um, but it is less than we usually go for. So, uh, there is some interesting news. Uh, so, yep. obviously the big talk when it comes to the gaming news right now is about the Bethesda buyout with Microsoft. Um, Still talking about that. Next week, you're probably going to be talking about it some more. Uh, Micro yeah. Microsoft slash Xbox is doing a live event uh, during the Nutbox next week. Oh, nice. So, no, we will not be trading it. Well, Why not? If it is actually during the Nutbox and not before or after, we might actually stream it uh, during the podcast. Oh, cool. Never uh, mind then. I was wrong. We'll probably just carry on talking about whatever until they show something that's interesting. So if you're wanting to watch the entire so thing. So we're, we're going to be talking the whole time is what you're saying? Yeah. 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 Until they show Outer Scrolls 6, in which case I'm ending the stream so I can watch it in privacy. <laughs> <laughs> you, wanna, you just want to jerk off. Yes, to the Outer Scrolls 6. <laughs> Um, oh no! All we've seen oh, of that no, game so far, care. all we've seen of that game is like grass and a title screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was also a shore. Yeah, it was a shoreline. Yeah, there was water. There was a big. There was a big city. Well, a tower. A tower. Oh, there was also there was a, a sun. There was sky. There was a pre-rendered cutscene. Not even that. It was just like a bird flying. There was an animation. Uh, a thing happened. Uh, I actually watched uh, this dude made a uh, fake trailer for the Elder Scrolls Six, piecing together like trailers from like different like games and just like a bunch of different shit. 
And uh, if I can find it, uh, if somebody wants to remind me in the comments on YouTube, because I'll probably forget, but if I can find it, I'll link it down below. Because like, it actually looked like pretty real. Like he did a really good job with faking that trailer. Um, so much so that it, it blew up in views and was actually recommended to me by YouTube. Like I got a notica- notification wow. on my phone that said Elder Scrolls 6 trailer. And I was like, I'm pretty sure what? at this point, YouTube just recommends anything that says Elder Scrolls in it to you. Yeah. But uh, the comment section is full of people just saying, like, what the fuck? And he had to like put a disclaimer saying, like, yeah, this is what I do. I make fake trailers. I didn't expect it to blow up. I don't know why YouTube is saying this is an official thing. It's not. <laughs> so the guy who made it was just like, it's not official. YouTube is saying it is. Suffering from success. Yeah. I mean, the video has so many dislikes, and I'm sure the guy isn't that used to oh, no. being that disliked. Also, Soul Calibur 3 in the background. Hello. <laughs> and still uh still whatever the fuck that is on the TV down there. Why does your TV fuck up like that? Oh, it's just the scan lines. You only see it through the camera. You don't actually see it in real life. Oh. Have you never seen a camera on a CRT? No, I just didn't really piece that together. Yeah, it's a CRT. Yeah, I didn't really piece that together. Yeah. You're slow. <laughs> Kinda of retarded. Whoa now, we're streaming. Oh shit. You gotta watch your mouth there, Costelli boy. <laughs> I mean, it's also gonna be on YouTube, but I don't get. And you can do some editing. Anyways. Oopsies. Nah. Apologies. I'm not gonna bother editing, and cutting that oh, out. Yeah. YouTube, okay. YouTube doesn't care. They just won't pay me, but they already don't. So. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about what about our buddies over at Fanatical? Uh, it's not a sponsor through Fanatical. Actually, I haven't talked about them in forever. Uh, I'm still technically have a thing with them. Uh, if you guys haven't been on Fanatical, if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link down below. Uh, think of it like a King One and GTA, but not shady as hell. Uh, the, you can buy games for really cheap through them, but it's actually a legitimate thing. They get the keys from uh, the game developer, so they're legitimate game keys. It's not some shady crap. Um, and like they actually do like really good sales. Actually, we were talking about uh, Skyrim VR, and I I bought it like a month ahead of time because it was on sale, and I knew I was going to be getting a VR headset. Uh, I bought it through there for thirty bucks instead of sixty. Um. So, like, I actually use Fanatical a lot. I think I buy more games on there than I do on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, it's probably good, anyway. I mean... Well, yeah, like, I'll look at Steam, like, yeah, I want, I want to buy this game, but I was like, I go search for it in Fanatical, and it's like, oh, it's 10 bucks cheaper. Well, there we go. <laughs> it's really cool that Block Ops is still full price. Which one? One. Really? <laughs> <laughs> $40. Block Ops 1 is full price? I looked it up, still for fucking $40. That's not full price, though. Well, for an old game, that feels like full price. What? Why do you want Black Ops 1? I want to play through story again. I think the best part, though, is that Black Ops 2 from 2012 is still 60. <laughs> yeah. What is Black... What is Black Ops Row? R-O-W? R-O-W? Whatever it is, it's 40 bucks. I don't know. Here, Black show. Ops Row... Yeah, I have no idea. But yeah. All I see is Heroes of Fantasia. Black Ops 2 is still $60. Oh, you got a Black Ops 2 page. It's on there. I don't know what that is. Oh. Probably is some DLC shit. Yeah. Black Ops 2. It's like Nintendo, man. Like, they can have a game that's 10 years old, but if it's still on the current console, it's still full price. I've been wanting to buy. Uh, Hey, you want to get the Activision collection? No. It's 11% off. It's $858. I don't think I own a single Call of Duty game on Steam, and I would like to keep it that way. Oh, that's fair enough. Call of Duty. I do! I own a Call of Duty game. No, I don't. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 dedicated server. Why is that in my library? I don't even own Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Hide this game. Uh... So Black Ops Road, whenever you click on it or go to its thing, it just brings you to the regular Black Ops screen. Oh, so maybe that's just the original Black Ops then. Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, uh, I know the ending of this one is kind of weird, but uh, thank you guys for watching The the Nutty Box. Uh, if you guys want to catch it live, we stream it on Twitch every Friday, usually around 5 o'clock, uh, closer to 6 this time. Marie? Yeah, Casella's fault. Well, uh, I, I also know that some people are, you know, might be wondering why Marie doesn't talk a whole lot. Uh, part of it does have to do with her microphone. 
um, and just her current computer setup. So that'll be fixed That's eventually. Uh, I'm also going to force her to cover a few topics in the next one, so long as her microphone's working. <laughs> it's the computer, not the microphone. Uh, it is actually the computer, yeah. the microphone quality. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll get all that fixed. But if you guys liked this, then then follow me on the Twitch and follow, subscribe to the YouTube, and then subscribe to Costello's YouTube and Twitch and Marie's YouTube and just just. And Twitch. And, just just click Don't. every link that's down below in the description. <laughs> I have two good videos on YouTube, and even that's pushing it uh, as far as quality goes. So just Twitch is fine. Would you like to view my bi-monthly tweets? Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> I never use Twitter, man. I tried to get back to it. I posted like I, I probably like six or seven times in a week and then just stopped using it again. I'm so bad oh, about I haven't that. used it for like, forever. I'm so bad about Social it. Social media in general is just not... Something I enjoy. Yup. And that really sucks like a content creator. You, you should use social media. It's good for growth. It's good for networking and shit. But like, I've networked too much. I know too many people now. I would like to know less. Uh, Costello, if you would like to leave. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like, I, I just, I'm not a social media person. I was convinced by Eighth, another Twitch streamer, to get on Twitter to begin with. And I was pretty active for a while, but it's just not my thing. Like, Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, he seems like the uh, the outgoing uh, social media type. Oh yeah. yeah, he's on Instagram and everything else. And then uh, Marie was very upset today when Instagram went down. <laughs> she was. Yes, I was very upset. <laughs> I was infuriated. She's and it wasn't just Instagram; it was a message too. <laughs> I mean, they're both owned by Facebook, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah. What is a monopoly? Yeah. <laughs> what what be? It's not like I just bought I'm literally gonna have an electronic device in my house that is run by Facebook with a microphone built into it and cameras. Yeah, that's, that's a really good idea. <laughs> well the Oculus, it, it's owned by Facebook. So is that the Oculus or Steam? Do what? What did Steam make? Uh the index for a thousand dollars. Oh, this is the index, okay. Yeah. Um the Oculus is Facebook, which uh, Oh that's right. I, I, yeah, that's I remember reading about fun that. Fun fact, as of so the Oculus Rifts are fine, Oculus Quest is fine. Oculus Quest 2, you now have to have an active Facebook account in order to use it. Not only <laughs> that, but they recommend that you make sure that your that your Facebook account is in good standing before you make a purchasing decision, because if you're banned from Facebook, you can't use your headset. Nice. What the fuck? Figured I'd bring that up for you guys. That's a really interesting. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like that is an actual thing. You have to have a Facebook account um, to use the Quest Two, and you have to like you can't be banned. Like you have to actually have an active account. I think you have to be verified or whatever. Like you know what I mean? Like the email verification and shit, just to use your headset. It's so dumb. And Damn. those of you who are worried about privacy, you're inviting Facebook into your house Facebook by doing that. Is not, yeah. Like Biggest defender on that part, honestly. You are now linking the microphone on your headset and the cameras on your headset to your Facebook account. Good job. <laughs> Did anyone see the, uh, the South Park episode with the human centipede? <laughs> the human centipad? Oh, yeah. yeah, the human centipad. I love that episode. Great fucking show, by the way. All right. Well, we have now achieved the longest outro in Nutbox history. So, uh, hey thank you guys for watching. Nice. We'll see y'all yeah. next time. Okay. Goodbye.